African Philosophy, Wikipedia Article Audio African philosophy is philosophy produced by African people, philosophy that presents African worldviews, or philosophy that uses distinct African philosophical methods. African philosophers may be found in the various academic fields of philosophy, such as metaphysics, epistemology, moral philosophy, and political philosophy. Much of modern African philosophy has been concerned with defining the ethno-philosophical parameters of African philosophy and identifying what differentiates it from other philosophical traditions. One of the implicit assumptions of ethno-philosophy is that a specific culture can have a philosophy that is not applicable and accessible to all peoples and cultures in the world, however this concept is disputed by traditional philosophers. Furthermore, in a discourse on African philosophy, a new perspective on Ubuntu and transitional justice in South Africa, Christian B. N. Gate argues that the ethno-philosophical approach to African philosophy as a static group property is highly problematic. His research on Ubuntu presents an alternative collective discourse on African philosophy that takes differences, historical developments, and social contexts seriously. Definition Types the Nigerian philosopher Uzadin Manwela, prior to his employment to teach at UNN, said that there was no African philosophy available as a course of study in universities. All we were taught as students were Western philosophy. Nothing like African philosophy existed anywhere. In fact, many years after the introduction of the courses, there still remained arguments among experts whether there was really African philosophy. He was awarded the Amé César Award in 2013 at the University of Abuja for his work. African philosophy can be formally defined as a critical thinking by Africans on their experiences of reality. Nigerian-born philosopher K.C. Enyan Mu defined African philosophy as that which concerns itself with the way in which African people of the past and present make sense of their destiny and of the world in which they live. In this regard, African philosophy is a critical reflection on African leaderships in the administration of their duties towards their citizens, the morally blameworthiness or praiseworthiness of it. It will also provide possible solutions to the problems experienced in African governance. As a rational critical inquiry on Africans and their worlds, it is consequently the task of African philosophy and of African philosophers to make the uncoordinated coordinated, the uncritical critical and the inarticulate articulate, particularly in the case of preliterate Africa. One of the most basic disagreements concerns what exactly the term African qualifies, the content of the philosophy and the distinctive methods employed, or the identities of the philosophers. On the former view, philosophy counts as African if it involves African themes such as perceptions of time, personhood, space, and other subjects, or uses methods that are defined as distinctively African. In the latter view, African philosophy is any philosophy produced by Africans or by people of African descent, and others engaged in critiques or analysis of their works. Nigerian philosopher Joseph I. Omer Egbe broadly defines a philosopher as one who attempts to understand the world's phenomena, the purpose of human existence, the nature of the world, and the place of human beings in that world. This form of natural philosophy is identifiable in Africa even before individual African philosophers can be distinguished in the sources. Premodern Philosophy in Africa has a rich and varied history, dating at least as far back to the ancient Egyptian philosophy identified in pre-dynastic Egyptian thought and culture, 
and continuing through the development of the major regional philosophical traditions of North Africa, West Africa, Central Africa, and the Horn of Africa. In the early and mid-20th century, anti-colonial movements had a tremendous effect on the development of a distinct African political philosophy that had resonance on both the continent and in the African diaspora. There was also notable engagement in the pre-colonial and early post-colonial era with the Marxist and communist philosophical traditions developing throughout the 20th century, resulting in the flourishing of a distinctive African economic philosophical tradition. One well-known example of the economic philosophical works emerging from this period was the African socialist philosophy of Ujamaa propounded in Tanzania and other parts of Southeast Africa. These African political and economic philosophical developments also had a notable impact on the anti-colonial movements of many non-African peoples around the world. North Africa In North Africa, arguably central to the development of the ancient Egyptian philosophical tradition of Egypt and Sudan was the conception of Ma'at, which roughly translated refers to justice, truth, or simply that which is right. One of the earliest works of political philosophy was the Maxims of Tehotep, which were taught to Egyptian schoolboys for centuries. Ancient Egyptian philosophers also made important contributions to Hellenistic philosophy and Christian philosophy. In the Hellenistic tradition, the influential philosophical school of Neoplatonism was founded by the Egyptian philosopher Plotinus in the 3rd century CE. In the Christian tradition, Augustine of Hippo was a cornerstone of Christian philosophy and theology. He lived from 354 to 430 CE, and wrote his best-known work, The City of God, in Hippo Regius. He challenged a number of ideas of his age including Arianism, and established the notions of original sin and divine grace in Christian philosophy and theology. Christian In the Islamic tradition, Ibn Bajah philosophized along Neoplatonist lines in the 12th century CE. The purpose of human life, according to Bajah, was to gain true happiness, and true happiness is attained by grasping the universals through reason and philosophy, often outside the framework of organized religion. Islamic Ibn Rushd philosophized along more Aristotelian lines, establishing the philosophical school of Averroism. Notably, he argued that there was no conflict between religion and philosophy, and instead that there are a variety of routes to God, all equally valid, and that the philosopher was free to take the route of reason while the commoners were unable to take that route and only able to take the root of teachings passed on to them. West Africa Ibn Sabin challenged the above view, arguing that Aristotelian methods of philosophy were useless in attempting to understand the universe, because those ideas failed to mirror the basic unity of the universe with itself and with God, so that true understanding required a different method of reasoning. The most prominent of West Africa's pre-modern philosophical traditions has been identified as that of the Yoruba philosophical tradition and the distinctive worldview that emerged from it over the thousands of years of its development. Philosophical concepts such as Omal Yabi were integral to this system. The cosmologies and philosophies of the Akan, Dogon and Dahomey were also significant. Islamic II Historically the West African philosophical traditions have had a significant impact on Islamic philosophy as a whole as much of the Islamic philosophical tradition was subject to the influence of scholars born or working in the African continent in centers of learning such as Jin and Timbuktu in Mali. Many of these intellectuals and scholars created a philosophical tradition in these cities. In the Horn of Africa, 
there are a number of sources documenting the development of a distinct Ethiopian philosophy from the first millennium onwards. Among the most notable examples from this tradition emerge from the work of the 17th century philosopher Zara Yaqob, and that of his disciples. In southern Africa and southeast Africa the development of a distinctive Bantu philosophy addressing the nature of existence, the cosmos, and humankind's relation to the world following the Bantu migration has had the most significant impact on the philosophical developments of the said regions, with the development of the philosophy of Ubuntu as one notable example emerging from this worldview. Many Central African philosophical traditions before the Bantu migration into southern Central Africa have been identified as a uniting characteristic of many Nilotic and Sudanic peoples, ultimately giving rise to the distinctive worldviews identified in the conceptions of time, the creation of the world, human nature, and the proper relationship between mankind and nature prevalent in Dinka mythology. Maase mythology and similar traditions. Some pre-modern African diasporic philosophical traditions have also been identified, mostly produced by descendants of Africans in Europe and the Americas. One notable pre-modern diasporic African philosopher was Anthony William Amo, who was taken as a slave from Aakinu in what is now Ghana and was brought up and educated in Europe where he gained doctorates in medicine and philosophy, and subsequently became a professor of philosophy at the universities of Halle Halle and Jena in Germany. Horn of Africa Kenyan philosopher Henry Adira Orica has distinguished what he calls four trends in modern African philosophy, ethno-philosophy, philosophical sagacity, nationalistic ideological philosophy, and professional philosophy. In fact it would be more realistic to call them candidates for the position of African philosophy, with the understanding that more than one of them might fit the bill. In the African diaspora, American philosopher Malina Karenga has also been notable in presenting varied definitions for understanding modern African philosophy especially as it relates to its earliest sources. Southern Africa Ethnophilosophy has been used to record the beliefs found in African cultures. Such an approach treats African philosophy as consisting in a set of shared beliefs, values, categories, and assumptions that are implicit in the language, practices, and beliefs of African cultures, in short, the uniquely African worldview. As such, it is seen as an item of communal property rather than an activity for the individual. One proponent of this form, Placid Temples, argued in Bantu philosophy that the metaphysical categories of the Bantu people are reflected in their linguistic categories. According to this view, African philosophy can be best understood as springing from the fundamental assumptions about reality reflected in the languages of Africa. Another example of this sort of approach is the work of E.J. Algoa of the University of Port Harcourt in Nigeria, who argues for the existence of an African philosophy of history stemming from traditional proverbs from the Niger Delta in his paper An African Philosophy of History in the Oral Tradition. Algoa argues that in African philosophy, age is seen as an important factor in gaining wisdom and interpreting the past. In support of this view, he cites proverbs such as more days, more wisdom, and what an old man sees seated, a youth does not see standing. Truth is seen as eternal and unchanging, but people are subject to error. It is dangerous to judge by appearances, but first-hand observation can be trusted. The past is not seen as fundamentally different from the present, but all history is contemporary history. The future remains beyond knowledge. Nevertheless, it is said, God will outlive eternity. History is seen as vitally important, 
and historians are highly revered. However, these arguments must be taken with a grain of cultural relativism, as the span of culture in Africa is incredibly vast, with patriarchies, matriarchies, monotheists and traditional religionists among the population, and as such the attitudes of groups of the Niger Delta cannot be construed to the whole of Africa. Another more controversial application of this approach is embodied in the concept of negritude. Leopold Senghor, a proponent of negritude, argued that the distinctly African approach to reality is based on emotion rather than logic, works itself out in participation rather than analysis, and manifests itself through the arts rather than the sciences. Cheek and Tatiop and Muabe Binge Bilalo, on the other hand, while agreeing that African culture is unique, challenged the view of Africans as essentially emotional and artistic, arguing that Egypt was an African culture whose achievements in science, mathematics, architecture, and philosophy were preeminent. This philosophy may also be maligned as overly reductionist due to the obvious scientific and scholarly triumphs of not only ancient Egypt, but also Nubia, Mero, as well as the great library of Timbuktu, the extensive trade networks and kingdoms of North Africa, West Africa, Central Africa, the Horn of Africa and Great Zimbabwe and the other major empires of Southern, Southeast and Central Africa. Central Africa African Diaspora Modern Ethno-philosophy and philosophical sagacity Critics of this approach argue that the actual philosophical work in producing a coherent philosophical position is being done by the academic philosopher, and that the sayings of the same culture can be selected from and organized in many different ways in order to produce very different, often contradictory systems of thought. Philosophical sagacity is a sort of individualist version of ethno-philosophy, in which one records the beliefs of certain special members of a community. The premise here is that, although most societies demand some degree of conformity of belief and behavior from their members, a certain few of those members reach a particularly high level of knowledge and understanding of their culture's worldviews, such people are sages. In some cases, the sage goes beyond mere knowledge and understanding to reflection and questioning these become the targets of philosophical sagacity. Critics of this approach note that not all reflection and questioning is philosophical, besides, if African philosophy were to be defined purely in terms of philosophic sagacity, then the thoughts of the sages could not be African philosophy for they did not record them from other sages. Also, on this view the only difference between non-African anthropology or ethnology and African philosophy seems to be the nationality of the researcher. Critics argue further that the problem with both ethno-philosophy and philosophical sagacity is that there is surely an important distinction between philosophy and the history of ideas although other philosophers consider the two topics to be remarkably similar. The argument is that no matter how interesting the beliefs of a people such as the Akan or the Yoruba may be to the philosopher, they remain beliefs, not philosophy. To call them philosophy is to use a secondary sense of that term, such as in my philosophy is live and let live. Professional philosophy is usually identified as that produced by African philosophers trained in the Western philosophical tradition, that embraces a universal view of the methods and concerns of philosophy. Those philosophers identified in this category often explicitly reject the assumptions of ethno-philosophy and adopt a universalist worldview of philosophy that requires all philosophy to be accessible and applicable to all peoples and cultures in the world this is even if the specific philosophical questions prioritized by individual national or regional philosophies may differ. <laughs>
Some African philosophers classified in this category are Paulin Houtonji, Peter Badunrin, Kwasi Wiardu, Tsnaserekwa Burhan, Marcien Tala, and Lanzana Kita. Nationalist and ideological philosophy might be considered a special case of philosophic sagacity, in which not sages but ideologues are the subjects. Alternatively, it has been considered as a subcategory of professional political philosophy. In either case, the same sort of problem arises with retaining a distinction between ideology and philosophy, and also between sets of ideas and a special way of reasoning. Examples include African socialism, Ngramaism, Harambi, and Authenticit. Although Africa is extremely diverse, there appear to be some shared moral ideas across many ethnic groups. In a number of African cultures, ethics is centered on a person's character, and saying he has no morals translates as something like he has no character. A person's character reflects the accumulation of her deeds and her habits of conduct, hence, it can be changed over a person's life. In some African cultures, personhood refers to an adult human who exhibits moral virtues, and one who behaves badly is not considered a person, even if he is considered a human. Professional Philosophy while many traditional African societies are highly religious, their religions are not revealed, and hence, ethics does not center around divine commands. Instead, ethics is humanistic and utilitarian, it focuses on improving social functioning and human flourishing. On the other hand, social welfare is not a mere aggregate of individual welfare, rather, there is a collective social good embodying values that everyone wants, like peace and stability. In general, African ethics is social or collectivistic rather than individualistic and united in ideology. Cooperation and altruism are considered crucial. African ethics places more weight on duties of processial behavior than on rights per se in contrast to most of Western ethics. Africana philosophy is the work of philosophers of African descent and others whose work deals with the subject matter of the African diaspora. Africana philosophy includes the philosophical ideas, arguments, and theories of particular concern to people of African descent. Some of the topics explored by Africana philosophy include Pre-Socratic African philosophy and modern-day debates discussing the early history of Western philosophy, post-colonial writing in Africa and the Americas, black resistance to oppression, black existentialism in the United States, and the meaning of blackness in the modern world. Nationalist and Ideological Philosophy African Ethics Africana Philosophy this is a list of philosophers who theorize in the African tradition, as well as philosophers from the continent of Africa. List of African philosophers Notes and references